Hello, welcome to another episode of Test, Optimize, and Scale. Very excited to have Chuck Petit, head of Republic Retail, here with us today. Republic, one of the top Reg CF top investment crowdfunding portals. Thanks for joining us today, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you said investment crowdfunding portal. Um, a lot of internal debate about calling this, you know, equity crowdfunding, which is a typical thing to, to name it, but it's really not just equity anymore, as you know. So um, mm -hmm. happy to hear others using investment crowdfunding. 100%. It's been exciting watching the evolutions of the industry. And I've actually been corrected uh, by some groups that offer debt, uh, some issuers. So want to make sure we're wording it correctly and setting it up for, for growth. Uh, you guys have been involved since the beginning here. Could, could you share a bit about the story, uh, the path that Republic has been going down here? Yeah, sure. So, um, and I'll kind of interwind uh, my, my story as well. Um, real quick, you know, I had the classic like New York City Wall Street experience, uh, grad school, hedge funds, had my own, uh, my own business for seven years, real estate related. I was doing some angel investing during that period as well. And then uh, met a couple team members at AngelList um, probably in 2015, and they were coming up with the idea for Republic, which would coincide with part of the 2012 Jobs Act, uh, specifically Title III regulation crowdfunding, and that law was going to go effective in May of 2016. It was a no-brainer situation to me, you know, what they were up to. I had a, a, an MO of making angel investments where I would um, be the first dollar, or, you know, first dollar invested. I, I would also take on a role with the teams that I invested in because they had limited resources and always had a void. So I you know, offered basically the same thing to Republic. They were well funded by, in fact, by AngelList. So it was like my, my capital wasn't that important, but um, it was a small investment on, on the other hand too. But uh, came in with the team basically on day one to help build out what is what we called at the time the deal team. And so, you know, at that time, regulation crowdfunding is the only thing that we had titled like license wise. We had four campaigns, 25,000 registered investors, an average campaign raise size was about $75,000. So, you know, nothing to really, you know, write home about. But we started building out that deal team has really become the infrastructure of what is Republic Retail today. And you fast forward to today, we have, you know, 70 live campaigns. We have close to a million registered users on Republic. We have um, average raise, you know, size per campaign the last 15-ish months around $500,000. We've recently added to our repertoire, you know, in addition to Reg CF, um, we, we'll do Reg A, we'll do Reg D, we do Reg D both, you know, private facing and public facing. Um, we've also brought in different verticals. Uh, domain experts in video game investing, in real estate investing, in you know small and medium-sized business investing. So back to what we started on, it's no longer just equity crowd investing. It's you know it's investment crowdfunding because there is debt, revenue share, there's crypto, there's you know equity, there's early, middle, and late stage companies. We've seen the industry evolve pretty dramatically over the last four and a half years, you know, four and a half, five years. So it's, it's been awesome. Absolutely. And I like how you guys have your focuses. You mentioned gaming. Uh, I know for, for blockchain and some of the things that you guys have done in that space, uh, even for your own note, um, and, and real estate as well, too, yep. so that you guys are able to build relationships there, investors, different groups. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a two-sided marketplace, and that's wildly complex, as I'm sure you know. And for the investor side of our marketplace, we need to, you know, we need to bring them offers that, that can help them diversify their portfolio, that they have optionality. If you came to Republic four and a half years ago, you're basically looking at, you know, your, you know, general run of the mill tech startups. Those are the opportunities that we presented. You know, we couldn't get small and medium sized businesses to do business with us. Um, we were, weren't obviously going to get video games, video game developers to run a campaign with us. Um, why we went out and you know acquired these companies why we wanted these domain experts is so that when investors come to republic they have that optionality now it's helped that the industry has grown along with us because you're starting to see a lot later stage companies um not just through our, our, our private investment platform for accredited investors only but for um you know reg cf investors they're seeing 
you know, founders like um, Wes and Gagan from Didactic. That was a very hot Silicon Valley deal that everyone wanted to get their you know hands on. We were lucky to not, enough to get a, a, a part of that raise, and it's really a sign of things to come. A wider acceptance, um, you know, with the best and the brightest minds in the startup ecosystem, as well as it being you know accepted by the investors who typically back those companies. They couldn't get it. A lot of the investors that wanted to get into that deal couldn't because we were given the allocation to it. If they wanted to get through it, they had to go through Republic to get their allocation. So really good sign of the, of the times to come. Um, and we see stuff like that literally daily now at Republic that are just like, wow, this is something that we spoke of and we are seeing it unfold, which is super cool. Absolutely. And being able to see the average campaign size from about 75K. And I remember yep. those days we were launching ads <laughs> right out of the gate in May 2016, and it was tough. tough Tash, yeah. you're mentioning 500K and higher. You guys have over 800,000 members listed yep. on your site, different investors. That's such a huge audience. And obviously, March 2020 onward, we, we've seen tremendous growth across the industry, referencing metrics that we see on King's Crowd. Uh, and, and what do you think have been the key driving forces there? And, and how do you see that continuing in 2021 and beyond? Yeah. I mean, it's really becoming a, a, an accepted asset class, um, you know, by investors. It, 10, I mean, was, I, I've been doing this, I guess, for a while, but maybe the first time I made an angel investment was about 2005. I was looking at, you know, the date to see what the year was, but 15, 16 years ago. And I remember back then, like, you had to do straight equity. That was the only thing that you would ever you would ever invest. And then it changed to convertible notes. And then you saw in the last five or seven years, it kind of changed to safes being you know acceptable. Um, and it's getting just it's becoming more of a thing in, in mainstream and in mainstream investing. Um, wider population of people who accept it and will actually are demanding it. Um, we're getting you know our door knocked on by asset management firms that want to give access to their private clients. They want that type of diversification for their portfolio. So they're seeing a lot of like benefits, you know, in, in private investing. It helps too that there's a lot of stories out there over the last five, 10, 15 years where you have the, you know, whoever's of the world, the Ubers and this, you know, Spotify's and stuff like that are making killer, killer returns for private investors. And then the people realize, well, I could actually get into that for a thousand dollars as opposed to $25,000. Where is that action? And that action is on platforms like Republic, We Funder, Start Engine, Seed Invest, et cetera. Um, so it's, yeah, that's a, a very big uh, story that is brewing um, and, and maybe not even so much in the background anymore. It's going to become more and more of a thing where the demand just increases and causes, you know, a situation where this is where the, you know, the, the mass audiences will get their access. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what recommendations do you have for founders out there? I imagine you, your team are constantly talking to different entrepreneurs. If they want to go down the reg CF route, what could they test out in terms of how they set up their offering page, their marketing, their overall deal as a whole? How do they go about it? So first I'd say, you know, it's not so much a problem, but for people who are just coming into this world, you know, take it seriously. It is a serious um, event. You want to come into it and be professional. You're going to be exposing yourself from the mountaintops to, you know, as many people around the world as you can. So you always want to, you know, look your best and do your best. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's <laughs> be be prepared to to you know, you know, hit the ground running when your campaign launches. Um, a lot of people because it does have a process to it, especially for Reg CF and Reg A. That can kind of you know take the uh, take the fun out of it or the steam out of it because you're going through a, a pretty difficult, especially for Reg A, legal process, regulatory process, accounting process, etc. Um, but if you're if you're an organized you know founder and team, you're going to get through that pretty unscathed, and then you should be able to focus on the fun parts. And that's why I say you know be prepared to hit the ground running because it's legitimately pretty fun. If you're not a shy person and you don't have a problem, you know like I said, shouting off the uh, mountaintops and you're gonna enjoy what, you're, you, know, what you have at your fingertips. Um, there was one other thing I probably have to come back to and I'm forgetting right off the top of my head what it was, but well, we'll get there. It's so great that you emphasize the fun element of this because I'll see different groups look at it, perceive you know, a lot of work ahead. Oh, I gotta get in contact with this many first degree connections, friends, family, uh, you know, looking at my alma mater and how am I supposed to get in contact with all these people, but yeah. being able to, to, 
you know, phrase it as, as fun and bring all these people to the party um, and, and be able to use the whole round as, as a marketing activity at that and getting you should want to. I mean, you, you should be proud of your business and you should be proud of your product and what you're putting out there, whether it's, you know, B2B or B2C or whatever it is in between. Um, you know, everyone wants to have a brand name and this just gives you an opportunity to achieve that goal. So, you know, the thing that I, I forgot was, you know, to consider this to be a, you know, a complementary or addition to your capital raise life cycle. So investment crowdfunding shouldn't be the only thing that you, you know, you do when it comes to raising capital, just like friends and family shouldn't be the only way or venture capital shouldn't be the only way. It's just part of your repertoire. You need to have that tool in your toolkit when you're building your business. Um, so it's really important. You can see that pretty clearly when you have a conversation with a founder, if they've actually considered, you know, their, their past, their current and their, and their future steps and how they're going to achieve their ultimate goal, whatever it may be. And, and part of those goals is knowing what your, your fundraising schedule or, or goals are going to be. So understanding that I think is super important where it fits into the grand scheme of things will make you more efficient and a happier founder. If you're, you know, if you're actually planning in, in advance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, beyond first degree connections, I've seen a lot of great deals with, with very little awareness around them and others that have done a lot in terms of digital marketing activity. What type of best practices do you guys provide at Republic? What channels do you see to be some of the top drivers for successful campaigns? Right. I think a lot of it starts with our, you know, our campaign strategy that, um, well, first is we're, we're educating founders during the onboarding process about what they need to do to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. That's understanding what they have going on in their business and also their life, because that's, you know, a, that's a reality. Like campaigns can take, you know, 60, 90, sometimes 120 plus days. This is after you onboard. So you're going to be working with us for, and we're going to be working with you for a long time. So we want to know what's going on. Um, we also want to tell you what we have available for you, what we can give you access and where you're going to get exposure from the partnerships or, or the, uh, you know, the methodologies that we have within Republic. And that can be things like, um, you know, partners who have radio shows or podcast, um, written media. We also have an in-house, you know, digital um, marketing service that is there for free for founders. Um, they can continue using them for um, additional fees that they want, but most do not because uh, they generally get a lot of exposure to our audience um, through a dedicated launch email, our newsletter. We're putting them out you know, in advance at our ad events so they can get a, another piece of content made that they can share with their audience that we share with our audience. But a lot of this goes back to that beginning, those beginning conversations with our campaign strategy team to understand, you know, what are you going to do with this stuff? Well, first of all, what are you going to make? And then what are you going to do with it? And how, how do you share that content? It's great that you get like a recorded piece or a written piece, but it's super important for founders to understand that you can't put all of your eggs in one basket and just send it to your entire list. Here it is, guys, you invest in me, I'm the greatest. You have to segment, you have to bucket those, those people in your network, just like we do. Like we're not you know, hitting everyone at one time or we have preference, or, you know, our, our registered users and investors have preferences. So we're communicating to the ones who've indicated they wanna see certain things or, you know, that needs to be, you know, considered by the founder before they, like I said, put their, all their eggs in one basket and it'll be more efficient if they do. And they'll have a, a more fun time. Also, they're going to be more successful. Um, you also need to realize right off the bat that, you know, it's, it takes three to four touch points. And one of the reasons why we are, you know, focused on creating content and helping our, our founders create content is because you're probably going to have to put out about 12 to 15 things during a campaign for those three to four touch points to happen. Um, if that is, um, that content is fresh and new and interesting and engaging and it happens 12 times over you'll be able to get that three to four touch points and then the ultimate goal is you know assuming we helped you with onboarding to you know put your best foot forward in your regulatory filings in your in your actual deal page um and you are putting out you know content to people they come they can make an informed decision to invest become a customer or tell someone else about it and I think a lot of people don't realize that, the, you know, become a customer, like they, of course, know invest or tell someone else about it, but, the, you know, become a customer part of it is becoming bigger and bigger by the day. Uh, there is a crowd effect. Um, people can probably relate to it easily by, you know, I'm sure you've heard about like the shark tank effect. You go on shark tank at whatever 
plays a couple times on NBC and CNBC and stuff like that, and their website crashes and they sell all their product. Um, there is a, um, a similar effect that happens with, with investment crowdfunding campaigns today, where you'll see companies who pick up literally thousands, sometimes even tens of thousands of new clients. So they sell hundreds of thousands. And in certain cases, we've seen millions of dollars worth of products sold from the exposure that they were given during their campaign. Um, so that's a win. Like, you know, I, I, I raised $500,000, I, I need 5 million, but I also picked up $750,000 in annual sales. That's huge. So like people need to understand about the benefits, you know, holistically, as opposed to just getting a check. Um, as well as picking up an army of investors because they are wildly supportive. They do want to support. And we put, you know, we built tools that help our founders navigate that. And it might be, not be the best way to describe it, but it essentially keeps, if you have two, which is not uncommon, I think our average number of investors per campaign is 1,800. You can't have 1,800 people in your hair. That's crazy. Although you certainly can't have them on the cap table either. We, we've already avoided that and, and with various different, like, you know, legal ways of doing it. But you want them to help you, but you can't have 1,800 people reaching out to you at the same time or randomly here and there. It's just disorganized. So we created tools where they can actually, they being the founders, can communicate with knowledge of who they are to, to these investors. They can do it to one person or they can do it to 750 people. Or they can do it to 250 or, or all 1,800. But then they can start to actually extract serious and really like big value out of their audience, out of their investors who are there to support because they're totally in line with them. They want that company to win. Um, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but the last thing I'd say, you know, maybe not the last thing, but it is super important for founders to realize that, you know, the vast majority of investors take this seriously, whether they're doing a $20 investment or a $100,000 investment through regulation crowdfunding. Let's, you know, forget Reg A, but, um, the stereotype out there is that people are not sophisticated. The crowd isn't, and they're not going to be. I think that's a, you know, a bunch of crap and that they actually are. Um, I've seen people put in $20 and they truly genuinely expect a return on investment. And that's why they did it. And a lot of people say, what the hell would they want that for 20 bucks? You know, it's not gonna like, you know, move the needle. Well, think about it like this. If you are, or ever have worked at a, um, a company you're being paid W2 wages, they have a 401k plan every two weeks, whatever it is, five, 10% of your, your paycheck goes into the, you know, the mutual fund portfolio and you, you know, spread it out to 10 mutual funds. Well, the, the one that gets the lowest allocation is probably getting 20 or 40 bucks. And what do you want from that allocation? You want a return on investment. That's why you're doing it. So these individual investors are putting in 20 or 40 bucks. They also want the same thing. So that's totally not crazy. So you have to understand that. I think that like sets their the founders' expectations, it increases their level of professionalism and the way that you know they they treat this. Why I mentioned earlier, like coming into it thinking that you know you need to think that it is serious, it is serious business, not serious in like a scary bad way. Regulators aren't gonna like you know arrest you. I can lose your company, just you know, take it serious because it's money and raising capital is, is serious business. Oh yeah, so many great things to unravel there. I mean, that really paints the picture. You're playing for 1,800 investors. They're all taking it very seriously. They want to see that return on investment over time. They want to buy you in the private markets versus at a later stage where it's far more expensive. As you mentioned, starting with strategy, I see so many groups look to just you know, hop in there and start running ads or whatever it may be, mapping it all out, having that result in 12 to 15 different pieces of content, uh, anticipating three to four touch points. We, we shoot conservatively even say seven or more touch points on the content itself you're distributing across podcasts across publishers across your email and to very segmented groups who are genuinely interested in this type of offering on your platform um, as well as the investors their audience uh, the issuers audiences and getting it all out there uh, what about advertising are you seeing that play a large role um, and, and maybe even getting into the optimized question, what do you do when you see things not working? When you know, a group's putting out these pieces of content, they're just not hitting the benchmarks they need to, to hit 500K, to hit 1.07 million, to be in stage for 5 million post-March 15th. What, yeah. what, what do you recommend? Does it involve advertising? And just as a whole, how can groups optimize if they're not hitting their performance benchmarks? So a lot of different ways to go to go about this answer. Um, let me start with Reg A because Reg A is probably the um, well. That's the that's the place where I think 
advertising is the most relevant and you definitely need to go into a reggae campaign. Hell, you've already spent probably a hundred thousand dollars at that point just to get your one A qualified, your you know, books audited, etc. Um and looking at 12 months in that case. <laughs> yeah, well, it, that's a reggae is a vicious process, no doubt. But um yeah, you want to come into it with an actual marketing budget and you're gonna to want to spend big money. Like I think minimum twenty five thousand dollars per campaign is at the very least that should be spent. And I've definitely seen and had people that have spent over a hundred thousand dollars, and that's not crazy at all because they need to. Um it hasn't really been a, and it's it's very widely adopted in reg A. So like if you're considering reg A, be you know, expect to have a budget and spend that money through performance marketing, um, television ads, um, anything basically you can get your, you know, get your name on out there to the, a, a larger audience. Reg CF, it's, it's been, you know, hasn't been widely uh, accepted by founders. Uh, a lot of times founders, especially on the early side, just don't have the, the capital to do a five or $10,000, even a five or $10,000 marketing spend. Uh, they rely mostly on, on Republic. I think, you know, like to like widely, you know, discuss this, but at the end of the day, you know, since inception, seven over seventy percent of funds raised have come from us, our activities. Um, so founders really, have, we've carried more than they have. But I think if they added some marketing dollars to the situation, those numbers would uh, start to you know spread out a little bit more. Or sorry, they would get a little bit closer, and then they'd also raise more. Um, it works with Reg A. There's no reason why it can't work with Reg CF. Uh, as long as you're a quality company, you're putting out like something that you know people can relate to, and it is a viable opportunity. Um, Reg D that we also do um, on our both public and private you know, facing platforms, not something that they're, you know, because a lot of that's because it's regulatory driven, whether you're doing a 506C or a 506B and you don't want to cross lines and there's ad reg laws and all this other jazz, but Reg D is a different piece, accredited only. So Reg CF hasn't really been adopted yet. Reg A is definitely adopted. Reg A, they're spending big money. Reg CF has been a bunch of tests. And yeah, I think eventually at the end of the day, you'll probably see a much larger percentage of Reg CF campaigns with actual bar marketing budgets, or they'll start to, and we try with them to, hey, you know, you've raised $250,000, you can do a rolling closing, you still have 45 days left in your campaign, why don't you roll and close, take out and use some of that money for a performance marketing campaign. Um, a lot of times they just want that capital though. So they're not going to, and they like, they've been happy with the success of the campaign. So they're good with that, but things like that will change over time. If uh, things aren't working, though, I'd say, you know, go back to um, what you did before. Why did those not work? What were there A, B tests? Does there need to be a C and a D test? Should you revisit anyone that you've already communicated with? Or do you think that, you know, those those lists or net, that network is already dead? Um, likely is not dead. And you probably need to have something um, new, fresh content made that will basically get them to, to you know, engage with it. because. I think if you're on Republic, you are a viable opportunity that you do have some sort of like traction that's going to be attractive to a larger audience. And it's just a matter of getting you know, in front of them. So revisit what you did, try to figure out what didn't work and what did work. If you didn't do enough testing in the first place, do some tests. Things can happen quickly. You don't have to do it over a month. You can literally do it in a matter of a couple of days. So I always tell people don't sweat it if things aren't going according to plan. We see campaigns that probably should have raised a million dollars in the first five days that didn't do it until the last five days. Mm -hmm. We see companies that you never thought would raise a million dollars, raise a million dollars. Um, we try to share those learnings with all of our issuers um, during onboarding and then revisiting during the campaign throughout because it's a lot. Um, there's a lot of information, a lot of different experiences to kind of to weed through and the more you're you know, communicating with the team that you're working with, I think the better you'll do. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of that. We provide similar types of consulting to clients and look to see how to get it to work. Not everything's right out of the gate. Yeah. And let's say the next revision is hitting the metrics. It's all happening. There's still time left in the filing. Uh, maybe it's post March 15th and groups are looking to do 5 million on their reg CF once they're set up uh, accordingly, how can they scale? What have you seen to be the biggest tools to get groups from even 500K up towards the 1.07 million or, or upward and onward from that? Yeah, uh, so it's having an advocate in your network. Um, it doesn't need to be a celebrity influencer. It doesn't need to be someone who's in finance or, or in investing even. Um, it can be, you know, 
it could be someone on, on Twitter who has 250 followers with those 250 followers, you know, 75% of them will like a comment that they make or retweet what they say because they're truly engaged and they want to listen to this particular person for whatever reason. We've had several cases where, um, where issuers identified or we've helped them identify someone in their network that had that type of like power with a network of their own. And then because of the relationship that they had with the individual, it was like, hey, you know, I'm doing this and wondering if you can help me out and just share it with your community. And that that's a really great way to boost a campaign for sure. Um, there are, of course, cases where influencer celebrity, you know, influencer uh, celebrity type, in, you know, endorsements or they invested at that works as well. But a lot of it is just, you know, is, is pre-campaign, you know, networking and getting the word out there. And, and this, that'll be a lot easier now come with these changes March 15th, because people can actually start testing the waters. Yeah. There were some restrictions to it who you couldn't, couldn't talk to prior to the March 15th changes, but that's going to be, a, 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 that'd be a bit of a game changer. And you can get out there. You can, you can have a campaign where you're not, you know, actually actively taking in investors, but you can start to get indications. You get a feel for like, if you're going to be successful or not. And if you, you know, you're not successful, you know, with this testing the waters campaign, you can probably start to figure out how you could be, what was wrong, what wasn't actually, you know, interview these people, have conversations and take, you know, polls from them. Mm. What, what, what do they not find attractive? And then, so that, that's a whole nother world of opportunities that's coming up. So I, I'd say to founders, like, you know, definitely pay attention to, um, if you're not, you know, join a, a Republic newsletter or start engine seed invest, we fund or whoever newsletter, and then that information will be shared. You'll be able to read about what's upcoming and then you can actually get a sense of what you have possible. And, you know, you do that, you'll uh, be much better about, about being prepared. Same thing if I go on to like a, you know, I'm a, whatever, I'm a startup or, or I want to raise capital for my company and I'm only going to go to venture capitalists. Well, you got to like read about them and understand who you're actually targeting before you go and waste your time. You want to have like advanced knowledge of the situation or you're not going to do well. Great actionable insights there. Uh, like how you mentioned the distribution, you know, once it actually gets there, I'll look at publishers pick up a client and I'll, I'll, I'll watch the reposts, whether it's on social platforms or other publishers. And that, that makes the biggest difference of how far they go there and where it's, uh, you once know, it starts to look a little more place. genuine. Like, yeah, exactly. Like the first person leads it off, not a big deal, but if like three or four other people pick it up because they like genuinely liked it, or yeah. something is, you know, interesting to them, then that becomes like a thing. And all starting with that preparedness from the strategy. Yeah. Well, this has been great. I really appreciate the time here. If any listeners would like to get in touch with you, uh, speak further with Republic, what is the preferred method of communication to do so? I am, uh, I'm just Chuck at Republic.co. Um, I don't mind crazy inbound. I normally answer or I, at the very least, give it to someone else who will answer. So none will go, un, you know, overlooked. Okay. Excellent. Definitely leading the charge in investment crowdfunding and the uh, rising tides in the, the years to come here. So thanks for taking the time and, and speaking to the audience. I really uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Chuck.